And I'll, one of my questions to you was going to be, which show is the most out of pocket? And I think that the answer is Family Guy. Yeah. Early Family Guy Early was family guy. ruthless. Oh, they didn't give my a damn. God. Nope. <laughs> Welcome to the fourth act, our entertainment podcast, where once a week we discuss a topic in TV, movies, and more. My name is Gabe, and once again on the pod, the lovely Jets. Jets, 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 but it's spelled with a Z. Thank Jets you with a Z. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, we got to come up with with another <laughs> one, some way to maybe I'll put a little graphic. Yeah. J- oh, J-E-T-Z. the wheels are spinning. Yeah. Um. So today, what are we talking about? Today, we're talking about some good old adult animation. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was confused on how to how to title this or what even exactly. Because like, adult cartoon. Well, I almost said adult comedies, but I was like, no, adult yeah. comedy animation. Adult cartoon sounded dirty to me for yeah. some reason. Like I was looking, like did a little bit of research at work, like, you know, to figure out what we were going to talk about or what I was going to talk about. Mm-hmm. And I was looking up adult cartoon at work. And I was like, this is kind of weird. Did it bring up weird stuff? No, or, no, um, but I just felt weird about it. Like, if anybody would have passed by. <laughs> oh. I was just in my head about okay. it. Okay, no, I see now. Because for a while, I was like adult cartoons. Yeah. But I was like, okay, now I get it. Adult, like 18 plus Yeah, yeah, cartoons. yeah. What do you think I was saying? I just, I don't know. If I was I still understood it as like adult animations. Yeah. But like adult So adult cartoons. animation, right? That's what. Yeah, adult animation. So we're talking about adult animation. Yes, sir. Um, so, but before we get into it. Uh, of course, as always, uh, we appreciate any support we can get. Definitely subscribe. Uh, last week's goal was 50. Mm-hmm. And I think before the, the video even came out, because we, we record one week before, it was already at like 55 or something like that. <laughs> so by the time the video came out, we passed our goal. So right now, as it stands of this recording, so a week before, we're at 61, I believe. Yes. So the goal is 70. Next well, one. I say just start hitting the big goals. Starting 75. 100. That's too ambitious. Why not? 75 first. How okay, about that? Sure, 75. That way people feel like they can contribute. Like 100, that's, to, that's so far away. 75 is right there. That's true. So, <laughs> that's my thinking. Sure. So help yeah. us get to 75. That might take a couple videos. So I might be pushing that for a little bit. Um, but as, by the time this video comes out, it'll be the weekend of Barbenheimer. Now, if you don't know what Barbenheimer is, <laughs> it's going to be the day that Barbie by Greta Gerwig, the movie, mm-hmm. and Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan come out. We're going to watch both on the same weekend, not the same day. We're not that good. We're not, no, not that um, But the reviews will be dropping within a couple days after that, as quickly as I can edit them. Yeah. So we'll have a Barbie review. We'll have Oppenheimer. We're even going to record a little bit of a late review on The Bear. And then we'll have a Christopher Nolan ranking coming out the following week. So we got a lot of stuff coming out. Definitely subscribe if any of that interests you or if you like this video. You're going to want to see that. You're, you're not going to want to miss it. For real. Okay. So getting into this week's topic, adult animation. Uh, why are we doing this? Because this was your idea. Yeah. I mean, I've always loved adult animation <laughs> even as a kid. <laughs> see, well, sounds no. weird saying that, right? Well, yeah. But I mean, like, it, it's just a weird because, like, I was... What, like eight, nine years old watching Family Guy? My brother didn't like that I watched Family Guy. <laughs> really? Yeah. He didn't like that I watched Family Guy. Um, it was only Family Guy, though. And like whatever was on Adult Swim. So except- eight, eight, nine years old. That's what year? 2005, six? Uh, like 2000. Right? Uh, seven or eight. No. Yeah, okay, five or yeah, six. Yeah, five right? or six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's like early Family Guy, too, where they were like mm-hmm. really out of pocket. Yeah, super <laughs> yeah. out of pocket. Um, but no, uh, adult animations have like always been a thing for me. And and me too, by the way. Yeah. I, I remember like five, six years old. Like some of my earliest memories were like staying up really late at night. Adult Swim. Adult Swim, because yes. that's what it was. You'd watch Cartoon Network and all of a sudden Adult Swim turned on. Yeah. Um, and it felt wrong to watch Adult Swim. I'm going to be honest. As a kid, I felt like I shouldn't be watching this. Right. <laughs> But no, like that's where I would watch Family Guy, Futurama, and um, you know all that other fun stuff. And now it's evolved to different things. But even before that, like The Simpsons was just a major staple to me and my siblings. Like growing up, they 
were raised on the simpsons right, like yeah. they would quote that to each other and i don't i don't know much about the simpsons because it's not one of my shows but is that show like at least early on was it inappropriate not necessarily um i did note that though like the simpsons was kind of one of the shows that wasn't very like raunchy it's family friendly I, for the most part when they do like the itchy and scratchy bits that's when it's really violent yeah. but as far as like the cartoon or like the entire show itself with the family it's it's pretty tame it's just homer but e- even early on even early on it's okay. still pretty like it's still pretty family friendly and wholesome just a little bit of you know family imbalance and craziness and yeah it's not that it's not that bad yet okay um now for me same thing it's always been around um and it was never shamed for it or anything like that <laughs> uh but i do remember i think like because when i when i think about these memories that are so long ago like five six even like four years old mm-hmm. it kind of feels like a dream where it's yeah. like am i making this up but like i've carried these memories with me for so long they might as well be real <laughs> even if yeah. i wasn't making them up but i i could have swore that like augie my brother who has popped up on the podcast um that he had told me like oh he stayed up late and saw this show with like talking food or whatever and it was aqua teen hunger force (laughs) and then i remember staying up late to see it um but again that's that's such like a foggy faint memory yeah i don't know if it's true or not but it sounds real to me but yeah same thing Uh, i grew up with um family guy for sure was a staple for a while i think never on fox i can never watch these shows on fox they're always on adult swim tbs i think family guy was on there for a while yeah it had to have been fox because i would watch them on fox sometimes too no but what i'm saying is i i would never i had no reason to go on fox Uh, i guess unless maybe like sports or something yeah yeah yeah, maybe that but i don't ever remember watching like new episodes i would just put them on yeah whenever like whatever i'd put on cartoon network Go into Adult Swim and now we're watching something. But yeah, Family Guy. Um, the newer ones that, that I've watched are like Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty. But I guess South Park was one growing up too. I remember like going to the video store and renting the VHSs mm-hmm. and me and Augie would, would watch multiple episodes like that. Yeah. Sometimes watch them on Comedy Central. Um, but yeah, they've always been a staple. For sure. I fall asleep to them. Every single night. Oh, yeah. That, that's the thing night. is you're way more prepped on this topic than I am because till now, like before this topic was a thing, we came up with this topic a couple days ago. You did actually. And past year, no, definitely more than a year, past couple years, it's been a habit of you because you go to sleep before I do. You work earlier than I do. Mm-hmm. So I go in the room and then I see that you're already knocked out. And on the screen is like Futurama, The Simpsons. Uh, whatever adult comedy or adult animation you're into at yeah. the time, you go through your phases. I have but, my phases. Um, okay, so that's just a general um, intro to the conversation. But where do you want to go first? Because we're going to talk about, we're going to kind of like highlight every single one that we're going to talk about. We're, we're not going to highlight every single one. We're going to highlight the ones that mean the most to us. Because well, right. there's a lot out there. Right. We're going we, we to. We're not going to go through every single one that's under the sun. Just right. the ones that mean the most to us. And that's only, like, for me, I have, like, five. Yeah. I have one, two, three, four. I have six. Okay, and I think we might even be sharing some. So where do you want to go first? I want to start with, I guess, what started it all for me, which was The Simpsons. Um, That one's the most nostalgic for me. Like I said, um, my siblings grew up on that. I always love to consider my three siblings. I have an older brother, middle sister, and I'm the youngest. We oh my god, always... you said your three siblings, and I was oh, just like, Am siblings? I missing one? No, no, no. <laughs> what happened to the third one? <laughs> no, the three of us. I'm you the, third, are one. the third, I'm one, yeah. third one. I'm the third one. Um, but we would always compare ourselves. My brother would always be Bart, my sister would always say she was Lisa, and I was always Maggie. So we would Aww. just always joke around about that. Every siblings' day, we always send gifts of the three of them to each other, and it's cute. Um, what else? Um, I will say that The Simpsons isn't good the entire way. Um, it's only- I think that's all of them. All the, I think any long lasting show that's the case, but yeah, for sure. Because especially the- with adult animation or just comedy in general mm-hmm. that's lasted a while because of you know the how 
I don't want to make it sound all like, oh, you because of the snowflakes out here, but just, you know, because of how sensitive everything is now, those shows were forced to change. Yeah. They had to. Yeah. I will say for sure The Simpsons is definitely just so stale. And I heard that happen to Family Guy, but I haven't watched it, like, like actually watched it, watched it since, like, mm-hmm. 2009, maybe. Yeah, same, same. Yeah, it's just super stale. I tried watching some of the newer episodes of um, The Simpsons, and it's just so, like, Disney- cash grabby like they mention all of their um uh what is it their like ip ips yeah. yes the, the, the disney ip the disney ips in the simpsons and it's so like yuck um all their content <laughs> and making more content yeah and i did show you a few episodes so i wanted to ask you what you thought about them well i think i've already seen some of those mm-hmm. well today you showed me what, like two three yeah at least three yeah, and we've had we had to like prep as much as we could within a couple of days because mm-hmm. we were kind of late to this topic. So, well, starting off with the Simpsons, I'm not a big fan of the Simpsons. It's never been a thing for me. Um, my only history with it, and this just shows how like into movies I am, is that when the Simpsons movie came out, it was being promoted everywhere and it was yeah, such a big sure. deal. And they had Spider Pig in, in the <laughs> in the trailer, and like I was a Spider Man yeah. fan, so I was like, well, you got me. And I remember we made it like a family night to go out and like I picked the movie. I was like, let's go watch the Simpsons movie. Nice. So I saw the Simpsons movie just because, you know, I bought into it. I bought into mm-hmm. the marketing and all that. And um, that's pretty much it though. Like, I don't remember much from the movie. That's the one where they're like, they're in the dome. Yeah. Eba. Eba. See, I don't know. What you, I don't know. <laughs> it was so long ago. I don't remember. I saw it a couple times. And like, I've seen the show come up as we we're talking about earlier after you watch something whether i don't know i think that show's only been on fox right i don't think it's been like syndicated anywhere i guess not like no. it was never on like i don't know like like a tbs or abc nothing oh, like that like an yeah, adult swim no. it's, i think it's always been on yeah. fox um regardless it's always been something that was on and i'd be like watching in the background or something but i've never mm-hmm. like connected with any of the characters or any episode stuff like that um we did watch a couple of the, the what a treehouse of terror we saw those of, yeah we terror. saw a lot of them like one of the, the like halloweens or octobers that we were with our friends judy and george we saw like five or six like back to back and like they're cool like, i'm not having a bad time watching them but i think like the most i ever get with the simpsons is like i exhale out of my nose a little bit just like a <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like a smile you know again i'm not having a bad time yeah but i i would never throw it on on my own so going to your question about uh, the episodes today, we saw, what was it, season six, episode one, right? Yeah. Um, I honestly think that season five and six are just the best seasons ever. Mm-hmm. That's when they peak. Um, so the episodes that I showed you, um, I'm going to rank the three because um, I have three that I ranked. You want to rank them right now? Yes. Okay. And two of them are the ones that I showed you. Um, the first one, my favorite episode ever is Maggie Makes Three. That's season six, episode 13. And that one's just a very, like, real episode about, like, things happening in life and, like, you know, but how Maggie it is came still in. goofy. Yeah. It's still Until a the goofy. end. It had a cool ending. The ending is just so, so sweet. But what did you think about that one? That one was, like... So, well, as you were mentioning, you were going to explain the plot. But it, generally, it, it's just... It's about how Maggie came like like the story about how maggie was born yeah because they everyone they were looking at family pictures one day and they noticed that there's no pictures of maggie so they're like all the kids were asking like what happened like why is there no pictures of maggie did you guys not care yeah and so maggie was was unplanned and homer just quit his job and he was like like i don't know he was like he legit burned the bridge on the way out yeah like literally but he was like making fun of his boss and like like, giving him like a noogie and all that yeah 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 and because he thought like okay i could quit now all my all my debt is paid off i'm just gonna work at the bowling alley he was living his dream and then turns out marge is pregnant marge is pregnant and whatever then he is forced to go back to the job i'm simplifying the episode then he's forced to go back to the job and then maggie's born and Obviously, he loves her. He wasn't looking forward. Like, she's being born, and he doesn't care until he holds her. And then... Until she grabs his finger. Until she grabs his finger, yeah. And then she gets her binky and everything. And at the end of the episode, they're still like, oh, well, then where are the baby pictures? And then what did he say? That that they're at at the one place where I need... Something about where where he needs to see them the most. Yeah, and then it goes back to his work, where the job he was forced to go back to, the job that he hates... And all the the baby pictures are up there. And then there was a sign 
that he got for coming back, like like yeah. a shame sign. And it's, I forgot what it said. It said, don't forget you're here forever. And then at the end, it shows that he covered up that sign to read, like do it letters. for her. Yeah, yeah so it says, do it for her, but it has all her baby it's pictures. It's all Maggie uh, pictures. Yeah. So and I thought the episode was, like, it was cute. It was fine. Again, like, I wasn't, like, cracking up or anything. Yeah. But at the end, that was a cool reveal. Yeah. So I did really like that episode. I That one just holds me so much. Um, number two of my favorite episodes, I have all of the Treehouse of Horror episodes. All of them, yeah. <laughs> because they're all just so good. I love watching those every Halloween. They're just so, like... So you showed me the first episode today, Today I right? showed you the first episode, which I thought was, like... I felt like that was a good start. I like that first. They were, um, like, spoofing Poltergeist mm-hmm. and had references to, like, The Exorcist and all this. Yeah, Edgar Allan Poe. They did The Raven. I thought um, that was the worst one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can see that. The Raven is kind of boring. They do three sketches per episode, right? Like every time. I don't know about every time. Well, for sure this one. They for did. sure in this one yeah. they did. Um. So what else? I have Round Springfield. Oh man, I don't remember season. Round Springfield. Yeah, I'm trying to remember which one was that one. Dang it! Huh. I'm so and ashamed. It's one of your favorite episodes. I know, see? right? It's because there's so many good episodes of The Simpsons. Oh, you're doing that thing. Oh, I just can't. There's just so many there's good ones. There's just so many good ones. <laughs> I just, I just can't. Um, it's, I'm gonna be so upset because I'm gonna. Remember. Well, well, maybe some at some point while I'm talking, you can search it back up. I think what it is, it might be the one. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna guess what it is. Okay. Well, if you want to look it up while I'm talking about something, you could go ahead. Uh well is there any who's your, all right who's your favorite character from there Marge Marge, Marge really Simpson she is so hilarious I wanted to show you a compilation of her you like, probably should have because she's probably the one like I would have least to say really well I mean maybe Maggie <laughs> oh my god Maggie is yeah Maggie but like as a protagonist or I shouldn't say protagonist like it's like whatever the main character Homer like I in terms of all the main characters for like all the adults adult animations. He's never done anything for me. He's okay. But again, like, he's the leading guy in this show. Mm-hmm. I think he should be, like, he should be working for me. Yeah. And he doesn't, and I think that's why I don't love the show like that. But even Bart, he just seems <laughs> annoying. Like, I'm never rooting for him on the episodes that I have oh seen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I guess I could say the same thing. I'm I'm in it for Lisa, I'm in it for Marge, and I'm in it for Maggie. Lisa All and the Marge, girls. yeah, they're just, I feel like I resonate with them the most, and Marge is just a queen. She There's this one video I've seen that uh, go around of her where it's like, hmm, it seems like in times like this, all you can do is laugh, and then she just sits there in silence. <laughs> <laughs> She's that broken. <laughs> And I'm just like, same girl. Well, I'm glad same. you like The Simpsons. I'm yeah. glad it works for you. Yeah. Because that's like the one. I guess there's two that, that you like that I don't. So mm-hmm. first is The Simpsons, and then the next would be Futurama. And you know what is pretty, it's not going to surprise you, but they're by I, the same well, creator. I was about to say, I think you told me. Cause yeah. it, and then after you told me, I started looking at how the characters, like the character the models. Animations yeah. And I was similar. like, yeah, they do look like The Simpsons characters, mm-hmm. but colored and different hair and if you notice the aliens that are in the simpson like the one that we saw in the treehouse of horror i think they're also in futurama oh, sometimes cool yeah so yeah okay nice little easter egg um now should we go to futurama yet or do you want me to take over and go somewhere i think i kind of want to go to Futurama. no go for if it you don't mind we already because, naturally got there so. yeah um so well, futurama. well let me continue with what i was saying very quickly okay. so this one futurama is one that i've actually enjoyed before but it's just like when i reflect on it and think about it it's not a show that i love Mm -hmm. or even remember that well like bender's funny i at least have that bender's funny fry is funny is it leela or layla leela leela's cool and she's like the the last kicker of the group even like zoidberg (laughs) you see i have some attachment there um but it's just like i'm never i never want to put i'm never compelled to like put it on or anything like that so it's a show that I'll enjoy when it's on, but I don't really care to seek it out. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I, I can remember some episodes, like how it shows him going, like how he got there. It shows like him delivering pizza and everything. Because that's yeah, not like the first episode, it right? It is the first oh, episode. Oh, is it? It's the pilot. Okay. So yeah. I've seen that one. Um, I don't know. I couldn't say I have a favorite episode or anything, but characters, obviously Bender's cool. Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's not cool. Like He's cool to like. 
as a character, but in the series, he isn't cool. He's always messing shit up. Yeah, he steals. I love stealing. I love <laughs> taking things. Yeah. Um, okay, so why do you like it? It's another nostalgia show for me. Um, I would watch that show with my brother um, when I wasn't watching Family Guy. <laughs> I'd watch Futurama with him. So he wasn't cool with Family Guy, but he was cool with Futurama. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I guess same thing. Like Futurama, it's Futurama not that isn't that bad for kids. Yeah, no, it's the humor you don't get until you're older for sure. Because I just watched it because it was a cartoon, but rewatching it as an adult, I was cracking up. It's so stupid. It's so funny. Um, one of the most iconic lines is when um, Hermes is on top of the building and he's like, "I'm gonna jump." And Benders is on the bottom. Do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, iconic, iconic. Um, what else? What else? Um, same creator. Yeah, I brought that up. Uh, for me, the whole series is rewatchable because it's 10 seasons. Um, they have a couple movies and I'm able to rewatch that whole the whole series from so start to finish. Does it have like a consistent plot line? Because I, I know like they touch on things once in a while. And, like, even with, like, Leela and her parents. I do remember that episode, too. That episode is really good. Yeah, yeah. That one's so sad. I didn't put that one down as one of my favorites, but I should have because that one's really good. Um, Kind of. Um, It's kind of. It comes and goes where it sometimes does have, like, a plot, but not nothing really consistent throughout right. the whole series. Um, I'm kind of nervous for them to reboot it because But it th- ended... this is, like, their second reboot, no? I think so. Well, not but... reboot, but. Bringing it back. Like, it's not like they're retelling the story. Like, a movie reboot. Yeah. It's a revival. That's what it is. Yeah, but I mean, the first time... Okay, so what the show ended... It got canceled from Fox, I think, and then it got picked up by someone else. Maybe Adult Swim? I don't know, because... CBS? They, maybe. Somebody. Re- regardless, the show got canceled, and they didn't finish it off. So it just ended without any conclusion, nothing. And then it got re-picked up, and it kind of just picked up where it last off, where it last finished off. And then the show ended. And then they tied it all up. They had a little bow. They had the ending. Fry and Leela got together. Sorry, spoilers. But Fry and Leela finally get together. And I thought it had such a great ending. And they pick it up. I haven't seen the trailer for it or anything. But, like, they have it, like, listed. Season 11. And it's like, Fry. I saw the description for it and everything. And I'm kind of like, so that's it? Like, we're just going to bring it up? Like, or like nothing money? happened? You know, money well, obviously money. But like, so who owns it now? Hulu. It's a Hulu original show. And like Disney the Bears. owns Hulu, so it's a Disney property again. <laughs> I guess so. So yeah. they left from Fox. Well, Fox got picked up by Disney. So that's, that's what I was gonna say. Is like I thought it was still on Fox, and that why that and it was gonna be a Disney property. But no matter what, Disney owns you. So well, I you know what? Like I said, I don't know if it was owned and canceled by Fox, but I yeah. know that it was owned by someone, canceled, and then it got picked up by someone else. Right. I mean, regardless if it's Disney or not, the reason is money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to run by some of my favorite episodes really, really quick. Okay. Um, only two. I will say. There's no rush. Take your time. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, I will say I want I want to add that one that you mentioned because I only have two. No, that's mine. I picked it. <laughs> I'll have that one as my number. <laughs> it's three. like a draft. I chose <laughs> with the round one pick two. Gabriel selects. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, this one was called Jurassic Bark. I this one might be. I, you threw me off. Jurassic Bark. So it is that, Jurassic Bark. Okay. And it's about Fry's dog. Does that sound familiar to to you at all? No. So Fry, when he lived in the year 2000, he had a dog that he was taking care of at his job. It was like a stray dog, but he would feed it pizza, whatever. That does sound familiar. Yeah, it was his boy. And then, um, you know, he goes to the future, whatever. He goes to like some sort of um, um, history museum. And it's, of course, everything from the year 2000. He lives in the year 3000. And he sees a little petrified like fossil of a dog that looks like his old dog. And so, like, he somehow steals the dog from the museum and, like, he's trying to go on this adventure of how to bring his dog back to life or, like, how to... Ooh, pet cemetery. <laughs> Not exactly like that, but, like, try to extract the DNA. Try to Jurassic clone Park it. Yeah, oh, clone okay. him. Gotcha. Um, but, like, while he's, like, while they're in the middle of that adventure, he's remembering, like, the memories of him and his dog. And, like, it's just the cutest thing ever. Like, it shows him how he met the dog and, like... All he did for him. This sounds very familiar. Maybe if you put it on, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'll confirm sure. it. But yeah. Is it so, an earlier season one? Like it's not like a newer one? It's season four. 
I might have seen that. Season four. Okay. Um, but it pretty much ends with him not being able to bring his dog back, and it has that freaking ending, like, um, like the Maggie episode where it shows like the dog was waiting for Fry for like a thousand years. He was waiting for him at the pizza spot, and it makes me so emotional. <laughs> So sad. So your favorite episodes of these adult animations are the sad ones. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because I love when funny things can make me cry. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, the same thing for, like, comedians. For you know, sure. They're usually the best. Like, you'll see a lot of comedians be dramatic actors because they just know. It, it's like there's something there. Like, some something emotional there that's close to laughter and sadness. Yeah. Or horror. Horror? Yeah, Jeez. like Jordan Peele. I guess so. <laughs> I was that's not where I was going with that <laughs> for sure. Um so that's that episode. Such a touching episode. Um you yeah. Dogs any, are a man best friends. Any other episodes? Or? Yes, I have one more called Luck of the Fry ish. Fry Fryrish, whatever. The fryrish? Yeah. Luck of the Fryrish. Okay. So in this episode, Fry's like um I think he He's somehow looking into his family's past or something, something. It's all about the past. Yeah, for sure. And this one's about his brother. And, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. He somehow thinks about his brother. And then um, I think he goes to visit their his brother's grave or something. And he thinks that his brother stole his identity because he finds a Philip J. Fry gravestone. And he's like, I'm not dead. He's like, right. I mean, well, he was frozen for a while, right? He was, but like... Don't they just assume he's dead? Maybe. Or maybe. No, but like basically he... It was not his gravestone, but it had his name. It had Philip right. Fry on it. And um, he started looking into it and he started assuming that his brother stole his life and um, um, assumed his identity. But basically, at the end of the episode, he learns that his brother basically had a son... He named his son after his brother, Fry. Got it. And then his brother taught him everything or, like, kind of raised him like he would his brother, I guess. Like, he, you know, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm blanking out on it. But it has a touching ending because he, like, learns that his brother really missed him. It, it has that other, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen the theme here. I, I get it. <laughs> It was a it was a good episode where at the end there was a, a reveal and it was sad. That's yeah. your whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the Simpsons creators in a nutshell, yeah. I guess. Yeah. No but... originality, I see. Well, yes. This... I'm just fine. <laughs> so, I guess really quick before we move on there, since I don't have much to say about Futurama, who's your favorite character there? Uh, Zoidberg. Zoidberg? Yes. <laughs> just for, like, the dumb shit he does? Yes. With his little... <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm going to take over now. And, spoiler, I'm just going to talk about my favorite one right off the bat. Okay. So, I mean, can you guess what is my favorite one? Um, South Park. It's South Park. Absolutely South Park. Now, South Park for me, when I was younger, when I was talking about, like, renting it from, like, the video store and all of that, um, I think I liked it because I was a kid and it was edgy and there was these kids that were cussing and <laughs> Mr. Hanky was around. But at some point, they evolved. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I went away for a little bit and then I came back. The first episode I remember when I came back was when Obama became president. It was the day of, that, like, when he became president. That night, at least, again, from memory, mm -hmm. um, they had the episode ready. Yeah. And... From there, I like realized, like, dang, like, how did they do that so fast? And then I learned that South Park makes these episodes within a week. That's why they're able to be so up to date and current. And I guess as soon as something happens, they have an episode on it. Yeah. And there's actually a documentary. Um, you guys should go watch it. I forgot what it's called. Six Days to Air. Is it something like that? Maybe seven. Maybe seven. <laughs> Six or seven days to air, something like that. Just put a South Park documentary. I'm sure it'll pop up. But it shows the process that they go through to make an episode in a week. And uh, regardless, at some point, they, like, matured as writers. And, like, they're still making fun of celebrities, like, how they were before. Like, the Jennifer Lopez, uh, Lopez like, taco-flavored Kiyoshi's episode and all that, and making fun of Kanye. I mean, the, the Kanye ones came after this, like, change that I'm talking about, where, like, they still talk about 
dumb shit like that, like where they'll, they'll just make fun of celebrities. Yeah, they make fun of pop culture. Yeah, pop culture, yes, but more importantly, they talk about current events and just they just use satire and they just make fun of us, like yeah. everybody, society, yeah. politics, uh, current events, anything. And they're so good at it. And they're so ahead of the curve on some of this stuff too. Mm-hmm. Even with like some of the transgender stuff, like the, like the episode with Macho Man, and all that oh my with God. Strong Woman, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it. I think, I think it doesn't get as much credit as it should, or maybe it gets enough. Maybe, but I'm just talking about like my circle. Like nobody yeah. really watched South Park like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I started putting it on for us, like at the beginning of our relationship or something. Yeah, I think you get it. I think you know how smart. South Park really is. Yeah, I didn't. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't start getting it until like the pandemic special. Like, okay, that's really recent. Yeah, well, I guess three years ago at this point, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, because I don't, well, yeah, I mean, early on to our relationship, you would throw on a couple episodes, but like, I and I thought it was funny, but like, I didn't get it, get it. I didn't start cracking up until the pandemic special. Because before, like, watching it as a kid, I just, I thought it was funny, but, like, I never tuned right. in or exactly. anything like that. And again, like, like the commentary when you're a kid probably just goes right exactly. over your head. Exactly, exactly. But now as an adult, oh, my God, rewatching some of these old episodes, cracking up. Yeah. They're so good, even now, like, today. Like, some of these old ones that don't, <laughs> you know, they would not probably air now. And th- well, that's hilarious. That's the same with Family Guy, which we'll talk about later. No, but actually, now that I think about it, South Park still does like they still like to cross the line sometimes. Well, you have to, especially them. Especially like, them. Like, they've been trying. They've been trying to pull South Park off the air probably since it came out. Mm-hmm. But especially now, like, what are you gonna do? South Park is such a big name. Mm-hmm. You can't do nothing with them. No, nope. like, you can't take them down. Nope. Um, but yeah, uh, favorite episodes for me. Or let me let me go to characters first. Now, characters for me that I I try to shorten it because there's so many <laughs> side characters too. But I just did my top three: Cartman, of course. But again, what, back then I didn't like Cartman as a character because he, he was the edgy one. Yeah, I did like some stuff that he does. Like I get the thing on one of the first seasons is you, do you know the episode or have you heard of it where he like kill or gets this like his bullies. Parents, parents killed yeah. and he feeds them to yep. him and like that's the episode where everybody realized oh shit like don't mess with cartman yeah yeah so that's early on like that was a funny moment but um i like how cartman is now where he's not so like screaming and yelling and he has the mad face on all the time he's super edgy now he's kind of just like this like smart manipulator and he tries to like to to play the game whatever game he's got to <laughs> play to like get out of stuff or oh, try to take advantage yeah. of people and yeah. it's so funny because like now he's very calm and sarcastic mm-hmm. and he plays dumb yeah. in certain situations <laughs> he <plays> stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah like he'll try to find ways to get out of stuff like i'm trying to re- think of an example like uh, the entire pandemic special where he was just milking it milking not having to go to school he yeah. would get so he would fake his way out of his zoom classes oh my god <laughs> would do anything and everything to not go back to school now for my second character that i have is the side character but he was so good they started making him like he's like the official fifth member of the south park boys <laughs> and it's butters <laughs> butters is so good because he's hey, so fellas. innocent oh hey fellas <laughs> he's so good yeah that like they started giving him his own episode now they give at this point they've given so many people episodes they've given the goth kids and emo kids Scott episodes Malkovich. yeah malcolmson Oh, Scott Mag- Scott Scott Mackinson. And what does he have? I have diabetes. <laughs> yeah, diabetes. And they've given like they've even made like some newer like I don't know the correct term. So like in the special ed class, like they have new characters there. So oh. it's not just Jimmy and Timmy. <laughs> and and just side note while we're on there, um, Jimmy or it's Timmy, right? Timmy's only goes like Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> Timmy. Um, on like their superhero special or whatever uh-huh. like episode he's professor x cuz obviously he's in the wheelchair right i only i showed you those episodes um so he's in the wheelchair now i just saw a clip from the game when i was looking up clips i don't uh-huh. think i think the the game pulls from the show and the game looks just like the show it's even written by uh matt stone and trey parker yeah um but in the game because you know professor x has like telekinesis or like telepathy whatever he has all the all the tellers mm-hmm. and he had like he speaks perfect english and he has like a british accent 
because normally he just says Tama, but he when he talks to you in like from mind to mind, oh he talks God. perfect English, and it's freak, it's hilarious. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That little shit, like they made yeah. these characters that were like edgy at first, and then they evolved them, and yeah. now they're <laughs> fully realized characters. Oh my God. Um, but back to Butters. He's just like the the icing on top. Like, even like the episodes are making with him now. On the newest season, they have an episode where like he's he opens up like a rest or he's, he has a job. He's the only one that has a job, and of course, Cartman, Cartman and Kenny take advantage of him. So they're trying to open up their own restaurant. Butters is working his real job, giving them all their money to open up their restaurant, but they're just spending it on bullshit. And just seeing, like, Butters break whenever he does get mad <laughs> is hilarious. He's normally he's the coolest guy. Yeah. He's so innocent. And I love him. Yeah, shout out to Butters in that one episode where they're trying to get that fortune teller from the girls. And so Butters comes to school as a girl and his name is Margarine. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he dresses up as a girl so he can get invited to the girl sleepover. Okay. And then, For the boys? Are the boys like... Yeah, because oh, they girl. want the fortune teller because they think that it's an actual fortune yeah. teller. <laughs> so third character, and this is like my favorite favorite, and it was just over time. And again, another side character that they realized that they had gold and it's Randy, <laughs> which is Stan's dad. And he... He's always been around, and I think from what I can remember, that he really like blew up after the, I want to say the the World of Warcraft episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like they have that, the whole World of Warcraft episode is like once like there's this guy going around. Uh, you probably seen the meme. It's like a big fat dude with like pimples. It's like the generic. Oh, you live in your the mom's neckbeard. basement. Yeah. That you're a game or whatever. And he's all like in his chair. And he's beating them at World at Warcraft. And he's like a hacker or something. Like, yeah. he's killing their characters permanently. Yeah. So, then like, Randy goes in there and has to save the day. All this stuff. Um, and from there, he's kind of, like, blown up. And he's become this staple where he's kind of like the cherry on top. We're like, oh, you want to make the episode funnier? Just get Randy involved somehow. Like, the episode, one of my favorite episodes here is the baseball episode where the kids want to lose. <laughs> 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 the kids want to lose because, like, the, the season takes place at either over like summer or I think it's summer summer or some type of break from school mm-hmm. I think it is summer and they just every, all the kids even from the other teams they want to lose so they can go to the summer their summer quick so all the kids are playing to lose so every time like their teammate does something bad they cheer <laughs> and and it goes across the whole thing like like the South Park boys are just like they go all the way to the finals but every Every game they go to, Randy is fighting. He's being the obnoxious dad that's drunk and is like talking shit about the other team. And it ends up being like a little like gag where he's fighting the other dad on the other team that's just like that. Mm-hmm. And it gets all the way to the point where he fights like this uh, this other dad in the finals where he's like wearing like the whole wrestling outfit. <laughs> he's got the mask on, like the cape. <laughs> it goes. It has like a whole Rocky reference at the end. <laughs> I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> It's so funny. But on top of that, what Randy, I didn't get to another episode. I'm going to tie them together. Um, just everything Tegrity Farms. If you haven't watched South Park in a while, just watch all the Tegrity Farms episodes. They do a lot with the, the weed legalization in Colorado and on South Park. Yeah. So Randy starts selling weed and then he, they move from South Park, like outside of South Park. Uh, he has his own farm, Tegrity Farms, and they sell weed there, and it's super successful. And that's all like all he thinks about, all he talks about. And there's so many. I think maybe there's like ten episodes about it now. But for every holiday, they they call it like a Christmas special. And Randy in episode will call his weed the Christmas special. He'll call it like the Halloween special, and like they'll do something with it, and it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are my three favorite characters. Uh, let me just throw it to you because I know you really like South Park. Any favorite characters for you? Um, or did you take notes or anything you have on it? Um, not a lot of notes because I know I was just probably going to be bouncing off of what you said. Cause uh, I mean, like I said, I recently just got into South park and I can't say I have many favorite episodes. Um, well, okay. I do have three actually. Um, for sure is the, the wrestling one. That one. Always ah, so that's one up. of mine too. That's what I was going to talk about in favorite episodes. It's called oh. WTF. Yeah. 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 I forgot what the T's for, but it's like wrestling something friends, I think, or whatever. Uh, yeah. I can't but remember. But that, that's so It's hilarious. a pro wrestling yeah. episode. 
It's a pro wrestling episode and they took good job. <laughs> and I love that they have like the actual like the sports wrestling um in like it for WWE. a little bit. No, 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 no. Oh, the, the, the gym teacher. Yeah, the gym teacher who gets mad and he's like, That's not real wrestling. Yeah. So so the boys join wrestling at school thinking that it's gonna be pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And then the teacher, like the wrestling the teacher, the coach is mad he's like oh not this again he's like oh wait i think he says something like it's it's like that wrestling is gay or something he or says fake. something it's not real <laughs> he's, but he's talking shit to the boys yeah. now the boys created this wrestling wrestling league called wtf and it's in the backyard of somebody's house maybe stands i don't yeah, know backyard wrestling. and it's getting popular like people from south park are watching all like the rednecks and everything all the redneck characters that you're familiar with the, mm-hmm. if you're familiar with south park are all there they get invested in storylines, and they do really well. Like, everyone's super into yeah. it. Cartman's not being a piece of shit, trying to ruin it. Like, he's enjoying it. He goes for all but the stupid plot lines. The whole thing is, like, they're making fun of wrestling, because there's yeah. no actual wrestling involved. I mean, there's a little bit, but it's making fun of WWE and pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And, just and as a pro wrestling fan, like, even to this day, <laughs> they just nail it. Like, yeah, so they, well. <laughs> they nail it so well, because it's like, what we like about pro wrestling, it's, it's kind of like both. It's like, athletic and it's kind of a sport mm-hmm. but it's also acting like yeah. th- there's two elements to it but they they like drop where it's like normally it would be like 50 50 they drop like the wrestling parts like 10 percent, maybe even like five and they put up like the acting like 95 mm-hmm. so they're just monologuing to the crowd and, and they keep talking about like oh so and so cheated <laughs> cheated on me and like sleep with us but like it's just bullshit they're making up like these fake storylines and the crowd is really into it. Like, they're crying. Like, it's like a drama. And then when you go to the back, when they hear, like, oh, Vince McMahon's going to come and he's going to, like, scout or whatever. And then they're all in the back, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's like they're, like, like drama queens, too. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny the it's way that so they do funny. it. It's so funny. And, they, yeah, they completely treat it like a like a play. And the one joke, like, even a recurring joke, because you'll hear it once in a while now, is... Like the way he took his job, like that's like that's like the one storyline that all the rednecks love is like yeah. in wrestling when somebody takes somebody else's job, and I think it all started because they went to go see WWE at like in South Park. Like WWE came to South Park, they saw him in the beginning, and then they're like, "Oh, we want to do that," and that's where we first hear that storyline that he took his job, whatever. <laughs> and then they start doing it in their wrestling league, yeah. and then the, the bit is like he goes, he took his job, and here's you'll hear somebody else took his job, and then and finally. Everyone- it's not even worse. It's a rooster. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, um, now, as far as other episodes, just really quickly before we move on, um, the Black Friday series. Um, there's like three episodes, three or four episodes about Black Friday. Uh, again, Randy is like working Black Friday, earn some extra money, and people die. Like they're like last last year. So and so died or whatever. And I think I remember this one. So it's the episode where Randy's doing that, but the boys are trying to decide whether they want. I think it's PS4, or Xbox oh One. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> they're deciding whether they want a PlayStation or an Xbox. So they divide. It's like I think it's like a Game of Thrones spoof too. Yeah. Like Kenny's the princess and all that. Yeah. yeah. And the first <laughs> South Park game that they made, not ever. I don't know if they ever made any, but like from the two, um, the first one was Stick of Truth. I think it came out like 2014, 15, something like that. Was actually based off of this. Mm. So all the outfits that they're wearing, Stick of Truth. Um, they did that one in the superhero one that I was talking about earlier. They made a second game yeah. called Fractured Butthole. Fractured Butthole. <laughs> nice. So the Black Friday, hilarious. And then uh, we were talking about Tegrity Farms, baseball, WTF. So you brought up a bunch of my favorites, and you probably know them because I showed you. Yeah, because we watched them yeah. together. So last one on my list... Um, is Night of the Living Homeless. The episode is like Night of the Living Dead, where all the homeless people are kind of like zombies. Like, oh, like, and then they slowly take over South Park? Yeah, yeah, because they have a homeless problem. Yeah. And my favorite line from there is Randy. Uh, he's like walking home or whatever, and then somebody, like they're all asking for change, and he's telling everybody no first, but there's so many. And then um, he's like, all right, fine, here, and he gives them change, and then everybody starts coming up to him. <laughs> but they're like zombies, and he's like, Ugh. And then he... <laughs> He's all giving him change and everything, and he's like walking away. And then he's like, "Oh no, I don't have any more. I don't have any more." And he sees another guy. He's like, "I just gave you change." So like the guy that he just gave change to, Damn. and he throws a bunch, and then he gets stuck on a roof. <laughs> and then it, I guess that that maybe that happens, and like I don't know. It it I know it's referencing something. I don't know if it's Night of the Living Dead or if it's Dawn of the Dead. I don't know. But that episode's funny too, and it ends with them sending them to California. Oh, my and the boys God. are on a bus. Singing California Love. Great. 
genius. Oh my god. Um, last thing I'll mention because I didn't write favorite moments on a lot of these, but I did on this one. Um, the Jeopardy moment with Randy. Do you know what I'm talking about? <gasps> yeah. It's <laughs> a person that no one likes or something Are, that everyone hates. It's something like that. Randy is on Jeopardy and he has <laughs> he only needs one more letter and it's an N space G G. E R S, <laughs> and it says like who's somebody that like nobody likes, and then he's like, oh, he's like, I know what it is, but I don't want to say it, and then uh, and then he's like, all right, I'm gonna guess, and then he says what, what you think he's gonna say. He, he just look it up; it's hilarious. He says it like loud and proud, and everybody is like shocked, and it goes to like the TV, like the boys at home or where people at home, and everybody's just shocked, and then it's just quiet, and then it goes like. Ding. And then it shows the letter and it's A for naggers. <laughs> <laughs> so then, obviously, you can imagine where the episode goes from there, but it's one of the funniest clips, one of the funniest episodes. Just look it up. Even, oh, even though we said it, it would still be funny if you it's looked it up. so hilarious. So that's me on South Park. Um, if you want me to do a second one, I could do one that I want to talk about really quickly or unless you want to take over. No, I went twice, so you can go twice. So this one's going to be a lot shorter. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, I mentioned it earlier. Now, I, I really like what I've seen from Aqua Teen, but the thing is, like, I don't put it on. <laughs> yeah, same. I just remember really liking it when I was small, and then, like, I have these memories, and I'll go back and watch the same ones. But I think for the most part, I'll just watch, like, the same, like, four or five episodes. But my favorite thing about Aqua Teen is Master Shake. <laughs> just, like, his reactions, like, the voice act. I want to give all the credit for any amount that I like this show to the voice actor of Master Shake, I don't even know who it is. I should look him up. Yeah, he's pretty pretty great. But he is hilarious. Just the way his voice sounds, and then as Master Shake, and the the faces he makes, and all the <laughs> stupid shit he does too. He's kind of like Cartman too. We're just a bullshitter. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> but just his reactions, facial expressions, and just again, just his voice, how he says certain lines is hilarious. Yeah. And um. Carl, the neighbor Carl, is kind of like the Squidward of the show, where he's the neighbor, but he's always the butt of the joke. Everything bad that they cause <laughs> is worse on Carl. <laughs> he's like the fourth member of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Um, so I, I wanted to credit just all the voice actors on this, because I think they, they, they're what make the show, but especially Master Shake, for me personally. Mm -hmm. And the gimmick of this show is kind of like Monster of the Week. Like It, it reminds me of Courage. The cowardly oh, yeah, dog yeah. in that way, where it's like some weird monster comes, mm -hmm. they deal with it. An alien comes, they deal with it. The ones that are good, they reoccur. Um, but special shout out to um, three episodes. Bus of the Undead is the one that I always go to. I think it's like the third or fourth episode. It's the episode of like this moth. The Moth Man. He, oh, I think I remember. I probably showed I you. you the, show the Moth Man, one. he like shows up. He's like a science experiment. Same as like them. They're the food. Yeah. Um, he, he comes over. Like he escapes. It, it's bullshit. Like, they, I think the first season shows the scientists will like make something and then something will happen and now they have to deal with it. The Aqua Team yeah, Hunger yeah. Force. So then the Moth Man comes over <laughs> and then Shake has a signal on his head with all these lights flashing. So the Moth Man goes over there. And he just wants to get the light. But Shake is like watching Dracula. I'm not going to explain the whole episode, but because he, he's watching Dracula, Meat Wad, the tiny little meat guy, yeah, is, is all scared. And he's like, what's that noise? And then Shake immediately, it's Dracula. It must, it, <laughs> it must be. And again, it's how he says stuff. It's so funny. I'm not doing it any justice. Just look up this episode. They're like nine minutes. Yeah, they're super quick. Without commercials, because there would be two in one segment. It's nine minutes. Mm -hmm. You can watch this one. But... Seeing his reaction and everything and, and how he reacts to the situation. Like, there's a bus outside that the moth goes in and he he's just, like, he's trying to convince them all, like, no, it's Dracula. Like, Dracula's not in the bus. Like, he is the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes over, this, again, the animation, too. He goes over there and, like, throws a stick. But, like, like while he's out there throwing a stick, like, Frylock's trying to convince me. What? He's like, Master Shake doesn't know everything. And you just see Shake, like, outside the window. <laughs> easing into it and he throws a stick and like runs away uh it, it's it's funny i'm not doing it any justice but i love that episode um the moon and nights moon and night are are the little pixel characters and if you've never seen this show you might have seen all these characters at some point especially like the moon and nights they're like these very like they look 8 like a, bit yeah, nintendo video. game yeah yeah or even before nintendo um uh, like an 8-bit 
video game where it's just like they're like pink and green. One of them has a mean face. And they they come from the moon and they're so full of themselves and they're full of shit. Like they come they come down and they're just like, oh, we're so much better than you, and here's why. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we can jump really high. And but then they only jump like a little bit. It's like, well, on the moon we jump a lot higher. Like <laughs> like they keep trying to convince that they're so superior, but yeah. they it's like Twitter. Everybody thinks they're the shit and they're really not. That, that, that's what these Moon Knights are. They're Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're hilarious, and I think they knew what they had because they keep coming back. They're reoccurring characters. They keep wanting to steal stuff. They smoke cigarettes. They keep getting meat wad into trouble. They're funny. They're sarcastic. They're yeah. hilarious. Uh, last one, and then we can move on to another one of yours. Hand Banana. Oh, At the episode and God. the character. Yep. Hand Banana. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to explain this one. Um, is a dog that, that they, they make out of Master Shake's hand in Carl's pool. And yeah. I understand that sentence... Does not make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. But I don't want to explain it any further. Just go watch it. Hand banana. But point is that they make this dog that the neighbor, only the neighbor can understand. And as soon as like the dog comes out, he he points with his little hand and he tells him, tonight, you. <laughs> and then he's just like, hey, that's funny, Carl. He's like, hey, hey, that's 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 funny. That dog's funny. Like you guys hearing him? And like, what are you talking about? Because no one can understand yeah. him. Long story short. The hand is like raping Carl. Yeah. He's, he's humping Carl. But he's yeah. attracted to Carl. He's attracted to Carl for some reason. Then Carl makes his own dog that looks just like him. It's awful. Carl wears Car- Carl wears sandals. He's this fat, bald. Like, he's got like like the. He's, yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. What is it? Male pattern baldness? Is that I guess. What yeah. We're just like tough yeah. bald, but he has like hair around. And yeah. He's all hairy. He, he's got like a New York accent. He's got a wife beater. He wears some sandals. Joggers. And this dog looks just like him. Like, it even has like. Like human feet, like him it's too, a with the sandals. Dog. So he makes the dog so it can then rape Hand Banana, and then um, the dog turns on him. <laughs> Hand Banana, I'd like you to meet the Enforcer. And I want can, my name to be Spaghetti. I want my name to be Spaghetti. That's the iconic line right there. That's the <laughs> line that I go back to, and I I completely understand that the last like two minutes I've been talking about this doesn't make any sense if, unless you've watched this show. That's why I said I'm gonna make it short. I'm gonna leave it there. Great characters, crazy plots, crazy plots. They're only nine minutes. You're in, you're out. Yeah. Um, but where do you want to go from here? Because I got three left. I have about two. So I will go with my last two, and then you can go with yours if you want. Okay. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure one of mine that I have is also one of yours. Two okay. of mine that I have. Are, Perfect. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> I want to go next with, because I want to finish with my most favorite. So we're going to go next with Rick and Morty. Woo! Um, now, Rick and Morty. It's a newer show. It is a newer show. Um, did you put me onto this? Because it's... Maybe. I don't remember when I started watching it, but it wasn't that long ago. Well, it only started showing up in like 2017, 2016. <sighs> that sounds right. <clears throat> yeah. But go ahead. Um, I will say that I'm kind of glad that this came out when I wasn't in high school because I would be insufferable. Like, like you, you would have made it your personality. I probably would have made it my personality because when it did came out, I almost did. And yeah, I mean, I obviously got out of that really quickly because... Once they did that whole Szechuan sauce thing at McDonald's and you saw how some of the fans were, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be associated with that. <laughs> yeah, but you see, that's an example of people just ruining shit. That, yeah. that was such a small amount of people that actually watched the show, I'm sure. True, but have you seen, like, the videos that came out with that whole thing? There were there was a video. I remember it being a thing, but I wasn't even watching that show yet. So there's, there was just a thing that happened that I didn't pay attention to. Yeah, there was a video of a fan at a McDonald's who wanted the Szechuan sauce and I guess they didn't have any. So like one of his friends or someone at the store recorded this guy. He jumped up on the counter and then he went, I'm pickle Rick. And just started like being dumb and like saying, I want my Szechuan sauce. I got got, like, I got like cringe just listening to you do that. Yeah. (laughs) How do you think I felt when I saw the video? I was like, Ooh, these, this, but it, but it was a kid, right? Like it wasn't a. I don't think it was a kid. I think it was, it was a young like man. A young man. It wasn't a. It, if it was a kid in high school, I would have been like, okay, it's just a fucking kid. But this person looked like he got a bills. beard. He pays bills. 
Yeah, because he's got a mortgage. Yeah, I don't think he had a beard, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> way to, way to make it. Way to make Rick and Morty. <laughs> you know so what, <laughs> dude? There's already been so much shit that uh, happened to the show. That's it's what already, I was gonna say. It's already done. The Justin Roiland shit. It ruined the show. Well, we'll see how how it affects the show going forward. But I mean, he is the voice of the two main characters, so I can't see how it's going to be the same going forward. Yeah, but um, yeah, but it was really sucks. yeah, sucked that it happened. Um, shame on you, man! Don't 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 be preying on young girls. That goes for everyone. Don't prey on young people. Um, but anyways, when it started, it started hot. It's a really good show. It was super raunchy. Like, all the way through, I don't... I mean, not that I'm in, like, the Rick and Morty fan base, but I don't ever hear people being like, oh, it fell off or anything like that. You know what's funny is that my boss, Nick... Dang, you're just name-dropping. Oops, sorry. But I, I can't remember... I, I, I don't know, whatever. Where does he live? Where does he live? He lives in... His address is 1234. Just kidding. Um, he was actually the first person I ever heard say that the show was falling off. Um, How old is this guy? He's in his 30s, early 30s. He just grew up. That's it. <laughs> Maybe. But, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've seen the newest season. He said that the newest season, fell, like, I think it was when season four came off, came out. Well, I think they're on, like, six already. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, he was saying that at season four, it already fell off, that the show was already trying to be too meta and trying to be too, like, um um not problematic i guess you know just say it say the word you want soft not soft like pc oh yeah woke I'm yeah sure that's what he said <laughs> yeah i think that is what he said that it started getting too woke he started pandering to all the snowflakes something like that but um <clears throat> i haven't caught up with any of the new seasons either but i will say it was a really good uh first three seasons that's when i was really into it i got into it or at least I saw what I actually started watching episodes after it was like during that pickle Rick season. Yeah. Cause like I heard about the, what are the Szechuan? Szechuan. Szechuan sauce. And then the pickle Rick thing that like blew up on the internet. That was when it was the hottest. Yeah. That's when it was like peaking. And I think I seen that season. And then I think I started like watching like bits and pieces from there. And then I think, I think I actually started watching more when I got with you, mm-hmm. but I really like this show, and what I want to compliment it for the most is the writing. Yeah. Or lack thereof, or just, like, the improv, but, like, just yeah. the voice acting. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to separate the art from the artist for a little bit right now. Um, the voice acting is great between Rick and Morty. Yeah. And just, like, how it does, it doesn't sound written. Like, it does sound, like, like purely ju- improv. Purely improv, and, like, just how it sounds so smooth, like, just going back and forth. And it, like just like how crazy it gets sometimes when they're talking over when they're like yelling over each other and all all that shit. Like j- just I just feel like those two characters are fully realized. Like you know, <laughs> like oh like oh that's classic Rick. Oh that's classic Morty. And but like it's the same voice actor and like, he's talking to himself. So yeah. I, I do think that's impressive. Um, favorite characters besides Rick and Morty. I feel like that those are like that's the thing with this is that the two main characters are. I think the best. Yeah. But besides that, like who are some of your favorite characters or side characters, anything? Honestly, I don't know if I have any because all of these characters are kind of awful. Awful? <laughs> yeah. In terms of what? Like In terms of like, like Summer is like <laughs> Well, like awful as in like in character they're awful or that they're awfully written? Like what do you oh, mean? Oh, okay. I guess I should say in character they're like They're awful bad people. people. They're it's bad like people. Seinfeld. Yes. They're all bad. They're all bad people. They all do shitty things. Yeah. Like I don't root for any of them. It's true. And and that goes for Rick and Morty. Yeah. But I mean, I have a shout out for Summer on here. Really? Cause, yeah, because I think like they realized what they had in Summer that like, she can like change the dynamic a little bit. Like yeah. Rick really likes Summer, but you know, he's always talking shit to like Jerry and shit. Like like they have different dynamics with each other. Mm-hmm. But I think once Summer got involved their antics got even crazier. Like, even Morty and Summer went on adventures without Rick. Yeah. You know, like, it was just another layer added. That's true. Yeah, um, I guess she is, like, the, I guess, the most to, to really yeah. like. I just really like, like, the dialogue when it gets, like, really scientific. I don't know if what everything they're saying is true, but, like, once Rick goes into, like, these long monologues on, like, how he outsmarts you or outsmarts somebody or why he thinks the way he thinks, it it's hilarious yeah for real. um now favorite episodes i made you watch this one earlier 
you've already seen it, but the Vat of Acid episode <laughs> is Rick to a T. <laughs> like this guy is so yeah. petty. And the episode, for those unfamiliar, um, really quick, the episode starts off with them they're in space yeah. like normal like they're at another planet and they're running away from like these mobster aliens and they jump into this vat of acid that's not really acid it's an idea from rick where it's like oh we're gonna pretend we're in a vat of acid they're gonna leave thinking we killed ourselves and that's it but like the the mobster was like that's like the that's the after they jumped to the vat of acid the mobsters was like oh my god i can't believe they actually jumped in it like like and that was his grandson and like this is really messed up. He's like, I don't know if I'm gonna recover from this. And then his friends or, or the other mobsters like, hey, all right, like let's go get a drink, we'll talk about it. And then he's like, No, nah, like it happened right here. Like I need I need to be with this moment. So like the so they're there for a long time, maybe hours, and Morty like gets to the point where he's pissed off and then just comes up with a ray gun and then kills them. No, they're about the mobsters are about to leave, but because their friend is dead, they're like, well, should we throw our friend in there too just to get rid of them? And then like they're they're freaking out because they're gonna throw their friend in the vat of acid that's not really acid. So they're trying to do some shit. And then like they do like the ladle test again for some reason. I don't think they, they Oh no, that's not there. That's that's at the end. That's no that's at the that's at the end. So they throw the rat. They throw the rat and Morty's trying to shoot the rat or something, but he shoots oh, No, you're no, ma- you're mixing it up. I am you're mixing, mixing it, it up. up. <laughs> so what no, what's he what's does happening? Shoot. They, he, he accidentally shoots one of no, them. No, no, that's the cop at the end. Right here, um he gets frustrated because they're they he keeps finding reasons to stay. Like the mobsters find reasons to stay. Yeah. And like Morty's just running out of patience. I thought they tried to throw a rat in there. They were doing the whole bone thing. I think for sure. I mean, they do that because then Rick had like bones. Yeah, but that was the first plan. Yeah. And then I remember him saying something about a rat. And then Rick pulls from the extra bones and he starts carving small bone. Yeah. Small rat bones. And then Morty lets lets out all the bones and all these. And he's like, yeah. that's a lot of bones for a rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my point is, we're going long on this. Sorry. My point is that. That the mobsters, at least the one guy, keeps finding reasons to stay there because he says something like, "Oh, like we should have some guy like come over and check those bones or whatever." Like he says something like that. Morty gets frustrated, comes out, shoots them. Oh, okay. Because he throws the rat at them too. He throws the rat at them and then shoots them. And then Rick's like, "Like, damn, what's gotten into you?" And he's like, "That was a stupid idea, Rick." Like he tells me how dumb an idea is, and like he lost his touch. So he gives him this device to, um, to like rewind time. And then whatever he said, do you want to learn how it works or do you just want to... Can I just quickly butt in and say that they made a Futurama reference in this and it's 100% true. That that whole little button thing that they do is how they end Futurama. Like it's the same rules where it's like you can redo the moment. And is it a shout out to Futurama? Or you're just saying it? Well, I mean, I th- they say like they say that it was already done in Futurama. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, he gives Morty this gun. Because he's like, oh, I have all these great ideas like this. And then he makes Rick make it. And then whatever. So Morty goes about his day, about his life, without knowing how to use it. Because Rick's like, do you want me to explain it or do you just want to go out there and use it? And he's like, I'm going to go out there and use it. Whatever. Long story short, he meets this. He keeps rewinding time for stupid shit. Like he'll trip, whatever. I'm just making stuff up. Like he'll trip and he'll rewind time or whatever. And he like he'll talk to a girl and then she's not into it. Then he'll try it again a different way. Um, long story short, they do like an up reference where he meets another girl, spends like so much time with her and he like falls in love with her. They go on a plane. They're going to go on a trip. They do the whole montage with the cute music of them living their life. Yeah. Together. Da-na, <laughs> and uh, they live not a full life. They probably are together. I don't know, maybe a year or something like that. Do they show him get married or anything? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, they show him like being happy with each other. He's in love with her. Um, then they go on a trip and then the plane crashes and then the he loses his bag. And this is all in the montage. Like, the music's playing, and then it gets sad. And then he loses the bag with the gun in it, so he's forced to live this life. Or not even a life, but he, he's stuck. Like, they're, like, in, I don't know, somewhere. They're with snow and mountains, and, like, they're yeah, freezing they, to death. they crash-landed in a mountain. And it's a montage, and somebody that they're with dies, and they're forced to eat him. And then the girl he likes is, like, crying. So he decides to go and find the device and again this is all a montage like the music is playing in the background it's like the up intro but worse yeah <laughs> and then he finds it whatever and then they escape and then what so he accidentally pushes the button or what no i think he pushes it and they go back 
He but, pushes. Well, the point is like he accidentally or on purpose pushes the button to like rewind time yeah. to the moment where it's safe. Because whenever he pushes the button, it, it's like a safe point, like a video game. It's a safe point. Yeah. When he pushes it again, he loads back up at that safe point. So that's just a little bit in that episode. It's hilarious. It's like that up thing, mm-hmm. that up reference. But then at the end of the episode, the whole point of why this is my favorite is it shows the pettiness of Rick because Rick is telling him, like, oh, no, like, you didn't, like, learn it. Because like, Morty's like, oh, I think I learned my lesson, whatever. And Rick's like, oh, no, like, all those things you did, you actually did. You didn't just re- rewind time or, like, restart. Like, no, you did those and you made different, like, universe, a different dimension, not dimensions, different Time-wise. alternate realities. Yeah. And and then he's like, all those things happened, and they kind of like their own, yeah, they're, they're their own timelines. And then Rick tells him like, I can make them all. Like, how do I fix this? He's like, I can make them all merge into like the same timeline, but you did all of it. So he does it, and all these people like, there's picket signs or picket whatever. There's signs and like torches and everything, and like the cops are after him. And then Rick's like, oh my god, more like, I don't know how you're gonna get out of this. Like, and then there's a vat of acid outside in the front yard. He's like, I guess the only way out is to jump in that vat of acid. And then Morty's <laughs> just like, oh my god, He's like fuck you or whatever. So it shows the pettiness of Rick, where he, the point of the whole episode was to show that Rick was proving that that was a good yeah. idea. <laughs> and from there is when there's two cops in, then like, how do we know this is a real uh, yeah. vat of acid? And then um, that's when they do the label Morty test. accidentally cuts him or shoots him. I went longer than I thought I was going to on that episode. I'm sorry. Um, there's other just moments in episodes like interdimensional cable. Those, uh, are, where, those are my favorite. Yeah, where the gimmick of that is like you. It's all improv. It's all improv. And then they do the animation after based off whatever the improv was. So you can hear them break character and laugh. And it's hilarious. Um, Total Recall. Uh, that's the episode where the parasites are. Like it starts oh, off with, yeah. when they're at home. And then like I think it starts off with it's the like, dad has a yeah. brother there. And then the, his, Rick comes in and like, who the hell is this guy? Like, oh, this is my brother so and so. Like, he's lived with us for like years, or whatever. And then Rick shoots him in the head. I'm like, oh my god! And then he t- it turns to a parasite, and he's like, no, like these are the parasites, whatever. They must have followed us here, or whatever. They must have brought one. And what they do is they go into your mind, make false memories, and they hide as these fake family members or friends. Mm-hmm. So the whole episode. You'll constantly see new characters. You'll see like a clown. You'll see like a dog that can talk, whatever. All these different characters. And like they're trying to figure out who's real and who's not because they don't know because they have false memories. And it all the shenanigans happens. Hilarious. Last one. Heist episode. The heist episode where it's like a play on Ocean's Eleven or whatever. I'm not going to get too into this one. Is all, that the you son of a bitch I'm in? You son of a bitch I'm in. That's all I wanted to mention. <laughs> I love that line. Where do you want to go from here? Um, I kind of want to go towards, I mean, are we going to move to a different show or different yeah, episode? Yeah, or, or, or you know what, really quick, because I feel like we moved a little too quickly after that episode. Um, oh, well, we mentioned it, favorite characters, favorite moments. Do you have any episodes that I didn't bring up, or are you ready to move on? Yeah, Are no, you satiated? I'm satiated. Um, yeah, I, I, I liked it when it was hot, and I hope. And you're like, now it's not. Yeah, <laughs> now it's not. But um, no, I mean, that's it. I guess we can move on. Um, I guess I want to move on to something, I guess, a little bit slightly more wholesome. I'm surprised you said you only have one more. Is that right? You only have one more? Um, Two or three. But I think... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, I said one or two more, but then I think one of them was probably on your list. Okay, really quick. I do need to use the restroom. So what I'm going to have you do, snap your fingers. Whoa, our drinks got magically refilled. <laughs> what happened? Um, okay, so where do you want to go next? So I guess we can just jump to... I want to start, or I want to finish strong. I want to finish on one of my favorites, so I think we're going to... Well, I want to finish, because I feel like I want to finish on one that we both like. BB? Yes. Last. Last. Okay, so what next, do you have next? Family Guy. Have we talked about Family Guy? No, no, I only have two more, so you know my two left. So let's let's talk about fa- Family Guy. And I'll, one of my questions to you was going to be, which show is the most out of pocket? And I think that the answer is Family Guy. Yeah. Early Family Guy Early was family guy. ruthless. Oh, they didn't give my a damn. God, nope. They they talk shit about everything and everybody, everybody, everything and all at once. Pretty vulgar shit. Sorry, I don't know if I was cursed. I'm supposed to curse. Oh yeah, that's where we draw the line. 
<laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, why do you like it? Why do I like it? Why did we all like it? It was <laughs> hilarious. It was stupid. Vulgar. You know? Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, like, I... Rewatching the show now as an adult, like, of course, I, the same thing I'm going to say for everything. I watched it because it was, you know, a cartoon doing raunchy, stupid stuff as a kid. And then rewatching now as an adult, like, I'm getting those jokes way more now. Um, <clears throat> I just think it's hilarious. Like, they do all, everything they do is just like a montage show. It's like, huh, that's like that one time when, you know. That's that's the gimmick of this show that makes it stand out from everything is yeah. that flashback gimmick. Like, it's almost just a clip show. Almost. With some story in it. But mm-hmm. half the the episode every single time is a clip show. Yeah. Like, it's just like, oh, what's a funny thing we can do? Yeah, and it starts somewhere and it ends completely in a different spot. Like, like the flashback or you mean like the episode? Just like the entire episode. Like, I... Frick, I didn't write down any good examples right now. Well, I can give you one, and it's because I I was going to sleep the other day, or I came out of the shower to go to sleep, and again, you were falling asleep to a Family Guy episode. Uh-huh. And the episode started with Peter opening up a restaurant, and then he ends up getting like all like elitist about it. Like, we only want the best people. So then Joe, which is one of my favorite characters. I only <laughs> listed three characters, and he's one of my favorite characters for some reason. I really like Joe. I think he's funny. Yeah. Um, and Joe... For those who don't know, is a cop that's paralyzed. Yeah. So he's in a wheelchair, and he's he's super buff from like the the, the waist up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but and he's a really good cop too. Like he's yeah. always chasing people <laughs> down and shit. But he tries to go to the restaurant, and Peter doesn't let him in. He doesn't want any handicapped people in. So then he comes back with a bunch of handicapped people, and then he says something like 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 form like the handicap Voltron or something, and they come up with a big big old robot, and he's like the head of it. And they start shooting things, but they're shooting like handicapped people that are on wheelchairs and turn this a big old action scene. And like, how did this happen? From we start <laughs> off with Peter getting a restaurant to now we're in this giant action scene. Well, here's another example that I just remembered right now. There's one episode where <laughs> Peter has a mustache and he's all into like the country man thing. He's yeah. wearing the jean, everything. I remember that. And he becomes a fireman because he has the mustache, the fireman mustache. And so he saves like the owner of like a McDonald's, like their McDonald's, you know. And then the owner is just like, oh, my God, like, I'm so thankful. Like, you can get free food for your whole life, you know, free food whenever. And so he takes Peter, of course, takes advantage of that yeah. to the fullest. And he's there like you. He- there's a clip of him just eating burgers after burgers with Brian. And then he has a stroke. And yeah, the rest of the episode is him trying to deal with the stroke and trying to sue the restaurant. And it all started with a mustache. And it all started with a mustache. <laughs> I wonder how they write. I wonder if it's just bullshit. Or it's just like, okay, we're going to start here. Where do we go? Like, it doesn't have an end in sight. I don't know. Or maybe it has an end and, like, they just don't know how to start. Well, I don't know. I want to mention versa. that about Aqua Teen is that I think that they're improv i think like like because i don't see how you could write that dialogue there's all the awkward <laughs> pauses and just stupid shit that they say i feel like that's improv but anyway back to family guy um so yeah what makes them special is their flashback gimmick i already mentioned that's pretty much a clip show just with some story in it mm-hmm. now what they like to do in in these references and just overall in the show is just pop culture references same as simpsons um but like some of the most iconic Family Guy episodes are like the Star Wars. Yes. What are you, you going to call them? Like the Star Wars retelling? Yeah. Whatever. Those Stewie is favorite. Darth Vader. He's <laughs> a tiny Darth favorite. Vader. Know, isn't like Cle- Cleveland R2-D2? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Quagmire is C-3PO. C2. Yeah, C-3PO. Um, another thing I want to know for Family Guy is like a lot of the time with their jokes is like they go on too long. So, like, where at first, like, they're funny, and then they go on too long, and then they're not funny. And then it goes on for so long where it gets funny again, or they'll reference it again, and then it gets, like, it's almost like, like, payoff <laughs> for sticking with this stupid joke for so long. Like, if you pay attention, it gets good again. Um, but who are some of your favorite characters in here? My favorite characters? <laughs> And again, when we're saying favorite characters, we don't mean like these well-rounded characters. It's more just like, who makes you laugh the most? Chris. <laughs> Chris, really? <laughs> stupid, who is it, Seth Green? Seth Green. <laughs> yeah. 
He's he's hilarious. He reminds me of myself sometimes. How <laughs> you always say these things in these episodes? We're like, like you said, the the guy from the thirteenth year remind. You're nothing like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now Meg, I can see it. You could see me being a little Megish. Yeah, because because Meg, <clears throat> she's a little self deprecating, but. She thinks she's a baddie, too. <laughs> like, she doesn't hate herself or anything. Oh, man. Poor Meg. Meg's cool. Meg's had some moments. Yeah, Meg has her moments. Oh, speaking of Meg, should she have a different voice actor at first, right? She does, yeah. And so when did Mila Kunis take over? Like, I don't know. A couple that, seasons in? Or I want to say the... probably after season two or three. Because the switch is pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only now when I notice... Like earlier, we were watching an episode, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." That w- she I, did have a different voice actor. I right? forgot about that. Um, I do want to shout out um, some of my. Well, I guess I can't say some of my favorites, but um, Carrie Fisher had a character in the series. Oh really? Yeah, she was like an ongoing character. Yeah, she was the boss, the the ugly boss that no one wanted to date or whatever that Peter had. Peter was forced to go on a date with his yeah, female boss I don't remember. because she was so unattractive and like never got any action. You don't. I think it was one of like, I can't say it's newer now, but it was it was like two thousand ten ish, eleven ish. No, I don't remember. But yeah. or maybe I've never seen it. Yeah, you probably haven't seen it. But yeah, Carrie Fisher. No, I did watch like montages of the newer family, or just I just like Family Guy montages, and I saw a lot of jokes I had never seen, so I assumed they were newer or at least after I stopped. And there's a funny joke. I was cracking up last night looking or watching it, and it was about Harry Potter and how J.K. Rowling is transphobic and how like it, it did a flashback to where the hat, the Sorting Hat. <laughs> we talked about it last night. Really, a Sorting Hat impression would be the funniest thing at a party. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just like, I think they put the hat on on the kid and said, like, mm, I don't know, I'm thinking Gryffindor or whatever. And then he goes like, oh, maybe Hufflepuff. And then he says like some random remark about being transphobic or something like that. Yeah, he it seemed like an easy joke, yeah. but it was still funny to me. It was just the impression of the hat that got me, I think. But uh, on top of that, my favorite characters I already mentioned, like obviously Peter. I mentioned it earlier about Homer. We're like Homer's the main guy, and I don't really think he's that funny peter to me is the main character and is funny uh not all the time he doesn't always hit he's a little annoying but stewie is great stewie is like kind of like like the poster boy of of the show i think like um peter's the main character but i think stewie is like the mascot yeah yeah i remember my cousin had a little bobblehead of stewie in his car that's cool (laughs) now I mentioned Joe earlier too. Joe's is really funny to me. Like he he's just a voice actor too. Oh, I I, I like yeah. I can see the voice actor's face. I don't know his name. I don't know his name either, but I know him as Kronk. Yeah, yeah, he plays Kronk too. <laughs> and you know what he looks like, right? Like you know the actor's face or no? No, he he's in an episode of Seinfeld. He plays as Elaine boy Elaine's boyfriend in yes, a couple episodes. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. him. He looks the way he sounds. Yes, so I don't know if that exactly. makes sense. Exactly. Yep. It's just funny, like the character of Joe, like that idea that he's a cop yeah. and he's like a bat, maybe like the best cop. He has a strong ass upper body <laughs> and just all the shit that he gets into. His wife is pregnant forever. Mm-hmm. She finally has her baby after like a lot of seasons. I don't know. <laughs> um, favorite moments I have. I didn't even put favorite episodes because I don't think I can remember episodes. Like, I remember I some, but I can I can't say they're my favorite <clears throat> episodes. Like mm-hmm. those are ones I think about. It's mainly just like moments and clips and stuff, but I just made a couple. So Peter versus the chicken is oh my funny. God. I think I've only seen the first three. Like I think they end up doing more after that. Yeah, it's just the longest running joke of that show. Yeah, I, I think it's the third one where they settle their differences. Where they're like, "Why are we fighting?" Oh yeah, like let's hang out. They go on a double date, and then like Peter makes some remark about the chicken's wife, and then they start fighting again. So oh it's like a whole like God. five minute scene. Um, and then the one thing that I do remember, like being like an event, mm-hmm. is when. Stewie finally kills Lois. Oh, do you, know, do you remember yeah. this? Because Stewie, his thing, same how I mentioned South Park in the early seasons, it was like very like edgy, whatever. I think Stewie was supposed to be like the edgy one yeah. who was always trying to kill his mom. And then Brian calls him out on it one day. And it's like, you always talk about killing Lois, but you never do it. You're never going to do it. So Stewie finally does it. They go on like a cruise. A cruise. Yeah. And then he has an Uzi. 
and he shoots Lois. Like he he shoots her up, and then she falls over. And there's a whole storyline there. It might be two episodes, or maybe one really long one. It, it was a two parter. So then she comes back, and then she's like, "Oh, like Stewie killed me." That's another thing with Stewie is like they can't understand him. Like he's always talking, but nobody understands him except for Brian, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're so close. But it, it turns out that that's just like a simulation, and he's like, "Oh, okay, that's why I'll never do it. It's because it ends up with me dying." And I think that's how the, there's, that was the way of being like, oh, okay, he's not going to try to kill her anymore. <laughs> like We're past that gimmick. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Family Guy. You know what's funny is <laughs> the one like bit that I remember from that episode is when they're like, but how did you survive? And then she's like, oh, I was I was discovered by a merman and he like helped recover me and take care of me. But instead of being the top half of man and the bottom half of fish, the top half is a fish. No, I thought, doesn't he convert, though? Like, he's originally, like, man and then fish at, like, he's man at the top, fish at the bottom, and then, like, he comes into the courtroom, and then he, like, he flips. No. No, you don't no, remember that? No, he saves her, and then I think she says, like, how can I repay you or whatever, and, like, he's, like, trying to have sex with her, and then, like, she's not into it, and he's like, well, what if I make you? But it's like he's like top half fish, yeah, bottom half man. legs. So then she just pushes him over and he starts flopping <laughs> like a fish. I don't remember him coming to the courtroom, but maybe he does. I don't oh, know. Oh man, never mind. I maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I thought like he converted to like opposite. Yeah, when he so comes he out could, of the water. Yeah, right? so he could have sex with her and she's like, uh no, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, that's so hilarious. And so we're gonna finish with this one here, but you said you had two more? No. This one's my last. Well, including Family Guy would have been two more. So, so I have one we'll, last one. We'll talk about this last one. It's the same one as mine. Uh, we'll talk about this one last one. Then I have some quick questions for you. And then we'll get out of here. So last one. I actually want to take over for on this one. Oh? Because you got me like into it, into it. My friend Jose had showed me one clip of this before and in I understood why it was funny, but you got me into it. And this show is Bob's Burgers. Yes. I always heard people talking about Bob's Burgers. I seen the characters, especially Tina. Oh, I seen queen. like like pictures of her or like stickers on people's car. I seen her all over She's iconic. Twitter at the time, like when it was very popular. Um, so the, the clip that he showed me was in the parking lot when Tina is like learning how to drive and it, she's slowly the going to the car parking lot with the one car. There's only one other car there and she has forever to turn. He's like, just pick one direction, left or right. Her dad, Bob, his teacher, they just pick one direction, like left or right. Like, and he's like, we're getting really close uh, to the car. Tina, for the love of God. Uh, <laughs> and she cracked. At the <laughs> and he was showing me this, uh, this clip and like, I didn't want to see it, but like by the time, so I was kind of going into it negative already because I kind of I think I like wanted to play something else or whatever. We were like young, and I was already going into it negative. And then by the end, by the time she hits the car, I was cracking up laughing. So I understood why it was so funny. But not until you came into my life did I did I sit down and put it on. Like you're the one that was putting it on, and mm-hmm. I was kind of like watching it out the corner of my eye. And then I started watching it, and then the rest is history. Yeah. I've seen so much of Bob's Burgers. Um, but you go ahead and take over. What's your relationship with Bob's Burgers? I started watching this show when I was living with my sister and my two nieces at her apartment that she still lives in now. Um, but this is something that we all got into together. So I guess, yeah, I guess you could say it's another one of like those now nostalgic for me. because yeah. I was like 15 or 16 when I was watching it. And now you're 19. And now I'm 19. <laughs> She's no. not 19. That was like already 10 years ago. I'm turning 26 this October. Whee! Whee! The so, big two six. Yeah, 10 years ago already I was watching Bob's Burgers. Wow. wow. Um, but yeah, that was a staple thing for me and my sister. And Goris and Juju, my nieces, I think. But mainly me and my sister. Um, it's hilarious. It is so funny. The first season is just so out of pocket. Um, and I had shown, actually put on the first episode for you today. And I wanted to ask you, what did you think about that one? Well, I'd seen that one before, I think. I oh, think, or maybe, maybe parts. Well, you had seen oh, you a know what? scene no. from it last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had seen no, that one. But scene. yeah, this is the episode where they introduce, well, they introduce <clears throat> everybody. It's episode it's the one. the pilot. But I didn't realize that the health inspector showed up from the beginning. I didn't know that Linda had a relationship with him either. Oh, you so did? Yeah, no. So that I understand the whole dynamic now. 
Um, but no, I, I really liked it. Uh, I seen. I think for me, I think like seasons three, four, and five are like the ones that I'm familiar with, just because you always had those on repeat. Yeah, because this is what you do. You you watch an episode and then like you go to sleep and like more play and then I watch like I'm going to sleep and like I'm listening to it or watching it and then you restart and go back to the episodes and then I end up rewatching no, the episode. No, cuz what what no. I do is I pick that episode one night it goes on and then the following night I pick the next episode That's what I'm because saying. I didn't see that so one. So I end up watching the same episodes multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> so um those are the episodes that I'm familiar with and then when I re now, like when you put on like earlier episodes, like season one or two, this episode was a little raunchy at first. Yeah, super. They yeah. talk about autism, about the crotch. And yeah, she crotch. They don't talk about autism. They make fun of her oh, yeah. for having autism, even though she's not autistic. Unless well, no. she is. <laughs> I don't know. They they don't really continue with that. Because I think he says, like, Tina, you're not autistic. Like. Yeah. But point is, like, they do get a little raunchy. Yeah. Um, which we don't mind. We don't give a shit. They talk about child molester. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Cannibalism. But at some point, like season three or four, somewhere around there, it does turn into a family show, mm-hmm. and it's still really good though. Like it, it is still funny. It's not like they're pulling back punches. It's kind of like they just found their audience. Yeah. So it is a family show, and that's what I want to compliment it on is that it. I think they realize that their best writing is when they're writing through the perspective of it being a family show and. Not just for like, not just being a family show for like for us, but like being a family show as in their dynamic as a family and learning lessons together and loving each other is the heart of the show. Yeah, it's pretty wholesome. Yeah, it is wholesome. Yeah, and and it works because they yeah. are good at it. That's what I'm saying. Like they found their footing and realized like, oh, this, this isn't a raunchy show like a Family Guy or like American Dad or anything like that. Like, no, we're doing our own thing and we found our voice, and it's really good from then on out. And they have really emotional moments, too. Yeah, they do. Well, the show was actually supposed to be about, um, you know, the first episode with them being a cannibalistic restaurant. Like, that was supposed oh, to be the whole okay. premise. Well, well, time out. You did ask me a question. I didn't answer it. I really liked the first episode. I really did like it. But um, so that that was the premise. Like, that's what it was going to be about. That's what they had pitched it as. It was supposed to be about a restaurant, cannibalistic restaurant that gets their food from the crematorium next door that wouldn't have lasted long yeah and that's not because it's inappropriate but just because like what are you gonna do with that and that's kind of why they didn't like they approved the show but they said like you can't do the cannibal thing like try to do something else yeah. so eventually like you know and it's so nice to see a fox adult animation that's not in the same like mm-hmm, family like as fam- well not even that but just it doesn't look the same as a family guy american dad cleveland show like well, they're what? from the same three. Yeah, well, creators. I'm trying. To, yeah, I'm trying to remember what is what is what's his name? Why Seth McFarlane. Seth McFarlane. It's not a Seth McFarlane show. Like they did do something different, and now they have like spinoffs or same creator doing other shows. But we don't watch those. We just watch watch uh, Bob's Burgers. Um, favorite characters. Now, here's the thing with favorite characters. So I put, I started coming up with my list. So number one was Tina. I love Tina in this. And then number two was Bob. And then number three was Linda. And then I was going to keep listing characters. Like, you know what? Everyone. I think this is like the only show out of this list that I'm talking about where it's just I can watch a singular episode about any of them. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Jr., even the <laughs> twins, like his younger brothers. Give me a show about what's his name? What, what's the friend's name? Why am Zeke? I forgetting? No, um, Bob's friend. Teddy. Teddy. Give me a Teddy episode. Give me an episode about um, Jimmy Pesto. Like, I'll watch any of them. Yeah. Mr. What is it? Fish Odor? Mr. Fish Odor, yeah. Give me an episode just about him, which we get, but like Bob's there too, usually. Like the gingerbread episode. Yeah. Where they're making gingerbread houses and they all shoot each other's gingerbread houses at the end. Um, But another element I wanted to bring up for Bob's Burgers is the music element. Because they have a lot of original music and some of it, if not most of it, if not all of it, is pretty good. <laughs> and my favorite song, <laughs> Derek. Oh, Derek. <laughs> what is it? Let's make a reunion. <laughs> Derek. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Just how that episode culminates. Because mm-hmm. she, 
I don't know if, if we should explain every single episode. We're kind of running a little long, but it's a it's a reunion episode, a high school reunion episode, and and the mom Linda, Linda yeah. she has a sister, and what's her name? Why am I forgetting? Gail. Gail had a crush on this guy named Derek, and she write she had written a song about him back in high school, and then the episode culminates with her singing that song. And she ends up hooking up with him, and she's like a really nerdy girl or whatever. Even now, she's nerdy. She only has her cats and all that. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, give me an episode just about her cat, Mr. Business, but we have an episode yeah. just about that. Yes, we do. Um, any favorite characters for you that really stand out? Jean. Jean is my favorite. Uh, well, Teen is obviously my favorite, I didn't like too. Jean at first, just because he just kept saying stuff that was just like, oh, look how stupid Jean is. <laughs> but... Again, as the show went on and they like they found their footing and figured out how to write Gene, I think he got better. Yeah. I like him now. I love Gene. He's hilarious. Um, <laughs> my favorite Gene moment is when um, oh, the blonde girl, I forget her name. Tammy. Tammy is like, oh, something, something. Where's my Gene jacket? And then Gene's just like, right here. And he jumps on top of her. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever seen that. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Um, Louise is also like Louise is great. She's the girl with the bunny ears. If you're listening an hour and a half in and you don't know what it, what this is, <laughs> she's the girl with the pink bunny ears. She's the youngest. She's the most mischievous. Now she's in one of my or she's the center of one of my favorite episodes, which is the Halloween episode where she never oh, gets yeah. scared. And oh, she never gets scared, and the family is trying to scare her. Yeah, so they take her to a haunted or a haunted house, and like they like rented a friend's house or something and made it a haunted house and it's it was awful like she didn't, wasn't scared at all and it was really bad like they're making mistakes it turns out it was all a front they did that to keep her guard down and then they actually scared her by having like friends come over and they staged this whole thing where they yeah. were running away from like a killer they were stuck in the restroom she comes but she's still all like oh yeah this isn't scary or like, whatever and they they go out onto like the not a balcony but like I don't know. They're on the second floor and they're like trying to escape through the window. So they get they're out like of on the like window. the roof, but not yeah. Like you can like it's one of those windows where you can step out and like the the ceiling is still kind of there, so you can kind of sit yeah, on the but ceiling. not a balcony. Yeah, not a balcony. So they're all on there, so they're cornered, and then like there's like a cult outside with like black robes and like they lit a fire and then yeah they light a ring of fire around the house it's like and a star too isn't it maybe oh it's probably a star <laughs> something actually. like that and then they're just like being all weird and creepy and then and then everybody's like panicking and scared and then finally the, she... the window opens behind her and then she turns around and sees a hooded figure <laughs> and finally she screams and is scared and then they take a picture and like, hey we got gotcha. you but she's not mad about it she's just like Oh, I finally got scared. <laughs> it's just really cool like, how it culminates like yeah. that. Um, another favorite episode of mine is um, Turkey in a Can. Oh, you know which episode that is? Is this um, the one with Tina and she's trying to grow up? No. No? Mm-mm. Oh, my gosh. Okay, tell me which one Turkey this is. Turkey in a Can. So a can is a toilet. Turkey. Turkey in the toilet. Oh, that yeah. Yeah. Oh, so... Okay, well, I guess I don't remember the subplot. Oh, yeah, Tina Tina has a subplot where she's trying to be a grown-up because she doesn't want to eat at the kids' table anymore. Oh, that's right, yeah. So this whole episode, like the main plot is that um, Bob is preparing the turkey, and it keeps... Well, not even preparing it yet. He's basting the, it. He's seasoning he it. He keeps going to the restroom in the morning, and like he has people that, that are over for Thanksgiving, and he keeps finding the turkey in the toilet. And he's trying to figure out who it is, who's betraying him. He keeps going back. There's a little, um, how a little bit where he keeps going back to the store and buying turkeys. And the guy that he's buying turkeys from thinks that he's just flirting with him because you don't need more than one turkey. So why do you keep coming back here? Like, oh, he said, he said, oh, I'm not like that. Like, but I know a guy who is. (laughs) And he gives him the number, and like Bob is just like, it's it's funny. It's so funny. Oh, my God. Because the guy, he's just like, hey, you know what? Like, because he's denying it, right? Yeah, he's just like, I'm not gay. No, but then the guy is saying like, oh, I got a friend that you could probably meet. But then he's like, who am I kidding? Like, he's saying that he, the guy basically wants Bob. And then Bob was like, I'm not gay, but maybe. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Bob (laughs) Bob has a moment where he's like considering it. Yeah. He considers it for a moment. 
Any favorite episodes for you before we move on? Hell yes. My first favorite episode of Bob's Burgers is Mutiny on a Windbreaker. And this is the one where they go on a cruise, baby. We go on a cruise? Yeah. Is it the one where they're forced to cook? Yeah. Or he's forced to cook? Yeah. That's a weird shamed. episode. <laughs> I love like that Like where like Gene is like... He's in love with a manatee puppet. With a puppet, but it's being controlled by a man. Like yeah. I don't he's know. He's scammed by a guy because... But still, that plot is weird. It's hilarious. I think it's, it's hilarious, hilarious because the, the puppeteer thinks that Gene is some sort of like millionaire because they have like the... Yeah. The, he sees that Gene's, that Linda has one of the gold member cards. Yeah. And so he's trying to get money out of Gene and <laughs> Gene just... Is not getting it, of course, because he's Gene. But why is he like sexually attracted to this puppet? Like, why is that funny? <laughs> not not it's Gene. It's something. That's very... why I didn't like him at first. Oh, okay. I mean, not just I because guess. of that joke. But I'm saying, like, that's why I was like, why is he this dumb? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Usually, it's the other way around in shows where like the stupid character gets worse over time. Like Chelsea from That's So Raven. Mm. You know, you you know what I'm talking about, mm. or like in Boy Meets World, the brother. Um, oh. Eric, he gets really dumb by the end. There's like this, this like dumb syndrome that takes over. Gene was really dumb at first, and then he gets smarter over time. He's like backwards. Um, that that episode is just so good. Just the way it starts. The way it starts, it's them at the pier. They're waiting for the the people to get off the boat, and then Bob's doing a little pep talk. Like, all right, guys, what's the plan? Gene, you're gonna say this. Uh, Louise, you're gonna do that. Tina, and then you're gonna hand them the 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 fly the flyer, and then <laughs> there's just this one part of like you gotta hand them the the flyer and say something, give them a pow, and then she's like, I don't know about pow, what about poo? <laughs> 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 and then Jean like puts the the speaker over her, and then she's like, Here you go, poo. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm not doing it justice, but it's so <laughs> that intro is just so, so you like good. the whole episode because it's the poo line. That no, the whole episode is just gold. It's just gold after gold after gold. And then um the and then there's the scene where the captain of the boat comes into the <laughs> comes into the restaurant and then he sticks his head in and is like is this restaurant semen friendly and then everyone's just looking around at each other <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the first seasons right like, what, like one season or two? three. Oh, three. okay uh-huh. okay um anything else on bob's burgers before we move on yeah after the bob's burgers movie i will say it kind of fell off I so t- the movie that just came out last year. Yeah. It's fallen off. So what, like one season so far? I think they are. Well, yeah. I like mean, since then? Since then. It hasn't. I haven't finished it. You know, I haven't gone back to finish the season. And even when I was watching it, like, it was okay. I just thought that, like, it's not as, I don't know. Like, they don't. This is going to sound so weird for me to say because it's such a weird, like, notice. But, like, they don't emote. Like, they're just plain-faced. And I just think that's really weird. Like, it seems really dry now. Yeah. Not the same. So it should end. I guess so, <laughs> yeah. Time to move on. <laughs> Maybe they're spread too thin, because like I said, they do have that other show. I don't know if it's the same writers. Mm-hmm. I think they have, like, two other shows. Cause they have one where it's, like, in a cabin or something the like Great that. North. And then they have, like, a musical one, don't they? Like, an- I thought they had another one. I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, no, Bob's Burgers was my longest obsession. I do go back to that one the most. Okay. Um, any other episodes, anything you want to talk about? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, here, here's, because we are running late. One or more episode. What do you want to talk about? Um, I guess the the best, well, no, not the best one in season two. Season two, episode one. That one's called the Belchies, and it's <laughs> you know which one I'm talking no, about. Just the name. I think we were just talking, or we, we saw it last night, where it's the one where Teddy talks about uh, the Taffy's Island, and he shows the map where it's like the butt and the three turds. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's that episode. But like, what is it about? So the episode is about like uh, a candy factory that's going to get demolished, and there's supposedly like gold in there. So the kids are trying to find the gold before they demolish the factory so they can, you know, get rich. And they sneak in in the middle of the night. Um, it's it's supposed to be Tina, Jean, and Louise. But Tina is trying to have, like, this spark of the romance moment with Jimmy Jr. So she invites him. Jimmy Jr. invites Zeke and 
his twin brothers. But they just, the jokes that happen in this are so funny. There's like a side plot with Linda and Bob where they're trying to get it on. They have their planned sex night and then they have the sexy dice <laughs> and then she rolls lick foot. <laughs> okay. See, I remember that bit. Like that keeps me, so I'm like, tired of lick foot. Yeah, she's like, lick it like you like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, oh, let's hug on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's such a good episode. They talk about popping sex pills in this one, so. So yeah, it was a little raunchy. Yeah. Okay, so you said Bob's Burgers was your favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, South Park was my favorite. I think we, we both mentioned that already. Um, one of the questions was which one is the most out of pocket. I said... Family Guy, especially the early seasons. Mm-hmm. Family Guy, but also Rick and Morty. I don't think they're that bad. No? Like, as, well, if we're comparing all of them together, like South Park and Family Guy are, are on another level, especially you know those what? early seasons. South Park, yeah. Yeah. Um, Way more out of pocket than Rick and Morty. Now, just two more questions, and then we got to get out of here. Are there any that you're interested in trying that you haven't seen yet? Now, for me, F is for Family is one that I'm interested yeah. in only because it's made by Bill Burr. Yeah. And we love Bill Burr. I listen to his podcast. He's it, it's all his stand up. We saw him live. We saw him live when he came here. Um, F is for Family. And then I just, I've always been interested, but I don't think I'll ever put, pull the trigger on Bojack Horseman. Oh, yeah. Because it's like, what's up with that? <laughs> you know, like, it looks weird. Yeah. But it's popular. So I hear it's really good. I hear it has those episodes that make you cry. Um, really? Yeah. I heard that there's what some the really hell? heartbreaking episodes in that show. Um, I've heard good things about that show, but there's something that someone said that kind of turned me off about it that it's very, like, it, it can be kind of heavy. They say that it's a kind of heavy show sometimes. I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what kind of took me out of it because, it, like, I don't want to be that sad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I kind of want something So more. anything that interests you? Um, Not that I can think of. I think I'm pretty satisfied where, with all my... Yeah, I have adult. enough. Yeah. yeah, I have that's enough. That's the thing is that like, you still rewatch them. So. I, yeah. Um, um, last question. Have you ever been offended by any of these shows or any bits offended i guess no not ever but because yeah, last... neither have i well let me let me bring this up to you last night when we were watching some of the family guy moments they had shown a bit that i had never seen before and it did kind of like put me back a little or where it was like that little bit with baby brian puppy brian and it's like Peter giving baby Brian to Chris. I'm pretty sure it's like like them doing a spoof of something. Yeah, yeah. And it was Chris who was like playing with him and like he breaks his neck and then his like nose is bleeding. Right. That kind of did take me back yeah. a little. I was kind of like, uh, okay. Like, I didn't think that was funny. I didn't But think I wasn't was offended by it. I was ah, you missed one. I, yeah, I was just kind of like, uh, but I'm not going <laughs> to like, oh, dude, fuck family guy. Like, that's yeah. not a funny joke. I was just kind of taking Call back. him snowflakes. Say it. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> no, because then I'd be the snowflake. I'm the one that's getting offended by it. There you go. The irony of the snowflake. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions you have for me? I mean, I'm ready to wrap this up unless you have something to say. Not really. I'm I'm actually surprised you went this long. Um. No, let me say this. End animation shows while they're still good. Don't keep them going. Just in general. End shows, end movies, end anything. While it's good. Leave them wanting more. Leave them wanting more. Don't bring back Futurama. Which is why I'm trying to end this podcast. Leave them wanting more. Yeah, there you go. And I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that would be a cool, cool spot to end it. Um. But yeah, that's it. All right. And that's going to do it for us. Woo. If you're here this long. Thank you. And you're not subscribed. That means you like this episode. Or maybe you just fast forwarded. But definitely subscribe to us. Like if you liked. Share with your best friend. And his mother. Or her mother. Or their mother. Their mother. And hey, if you have any shows that we missed, oh, 
Too Honorable late. mentions. Oh well. Too, too late. late. Too Leave late. them wanting more. Leave them wanting more. Drop your favorite shows that we missed down below. Drop your favorite adult animations. Yeah, yell at us in the comments for the shows that we missed. Everybody's been pretty nice. We have a good audience so far of 61 people. Well, we have more, whatever. Thank you. Next week is, Bar- or actually this week, by the time this comes out, this weekend is Barbenheimer. Go watch Barbie. Go watch Woo! Oppenheimer. If you've seen The Bear, we've got a couple episodes of some content coming out that you're going to like. So stick around, subscribe, and until next time, peace out. Bye.